Stage one, pressing for flight. We're go for launch. Let's light this candle. Yes, sir. Reading you loud and clear. Clear, clear, clear. The clock has started. The clock has started. Five, five, four, four, three, three, two, two, one, one. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Barking. Welcome to <laughs> Pressing for Flight, live from the Space Coast, where the schedule never holds. I am your host, Stephen Marr. We have a special guest for you today. But first, we have with me Stephen, Mr. Kegel. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> I had to wake him up, <laughs> if you can believe it. Working man, it's hot outside. I think yeah, tired. Yeah. Uh, we have Matthew, Mr. Jordan. Hey, y'all, what's up? We have Matthew, Mr. Cutshaw. Would it be? And one of my personal favorite space reporters, Dr. Ken Kramer. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's very nice of you. Yes. Uh, yeah, so you are by trade an organic chemist. Is that right? That's right. Is that the right term? Mm -hmm. PhD organic chemist, which means that's the chemistry of carbon and its, and its uh, derivatives. That's all about life. Right. That's what we're all made of, right? Right. We're all made of carbon. And uh, the way I found That's out about what you. We're looking for. Do what? Right. That's what we're looking for with NASA. We're looking for light. Yeah, yeah so exactly. Carbon. So, so would you say that that is what brought you into loving space stuff is that search for life? I've been interested in space since I was in second grade. Yeah. So it's always been in my DNA since I was a kid. What hooked you in? Do you remember? Eight, seven or eight years old. Yeah. What was it that hooked you in? Do you remember? What was it? Well, um, G Gemini and Mercury. Project oh. Gemini, Project Mercury. That's when that's was the dawn of the space age. Yeah. When we did Mercury Seven. Uh huh. And somehow yeah, I got it. interested in space. I just loved it always. Yeah. And that's just an inherent part of me. And uh, now I get to do up close. But, you know, I had a whole career as a, as a, as a research scientist for decades, actually. Right. And um, but I give lectures about space and and now I get to be up close. I'm from New York and New Jersey area. So I worked in the pharmaceutical industry for 30 years and in academia making medicines. In fact, I'd be working on COVID right now. If, if I was still working, I would be working on cures and medicines for COVID nineteen. Yeah, when we were when we did our little test uh, before before the show, you, you mentioned that you have kind of a lot to say about COVID. And uh, what, what's your message to people about COVID? Well, the main message is take it seriously. It's absolutely real. Yeah. I just got a comment from somebody on one of my posts thinking it was all a bunch of nonsense. Right. And that is truly sad. It is truly sad that people deny science. I'm a scientist. Mm -hmm. And there's always been a struggle since I was a kid to get people to believe in science. But it's worse today. It's mm -hmm. harder to get people to believe in science today because of everything that's going on in D.C. and elsewhere. Yeah. So but again, science and the and the main thing is. One of the big thing is wear your mask. Yeah. Wear your mask. Jean Wright makes these masks. She's sitting next to me. Yeah. Very good mask, by the way. Does... It's on the shuttle. And uh, you know, you have to take it seriously because the COVID spreads by respiratory droplets. Mm -hmm. So if you wear this, you protect yourself and you protect others. Right. Now you guys are a lot younger than me. And you probably think you're invincible. And you know what? You might be. You might be. But you know what? Your parents are not invincible. Right. And so you could be super spreaders. You, you young guys, you could be super spreaders. And you think that what you do has no impact on anybody. But it does. You spread it to other people. You know, there was a girl in Florida. I just learned this this evening watching the news. An 11-year-old girl here in Florida died from COVID. Oh, so yeah, everybody is vulnerable. Wow. So the aged are the most vulnerable, mm -hmm. but you guys are not impervious. There's many examples of, of, of children getting it and middle-aged people getting it. People in 20s, 30s, 40s, they're getting it. 
It's spreading throughout the country. We have 10,000 cases in Florida today. You know, mm-hmm. it's unbelievable. Yeah, that's, that's just, unbelievable. yeah, that's today's number, not like. That's today's yeah. number, 10,000. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we, we had 600. There was a graph. It was 600, 600 for many, many months a day, 600 a day in Florida. Right. Now it's skyrocketed, it truly skyrocketed, 10,000. In Texas, they had a record also. 8,000 cases. And you know what happened this afternoon? What? One of those science deniers, Governor Abbott, uh, you know what he did? He mandated wearing masks in public in Texas in almost all the counties. Yeah. It's serious. In California, Governor Newsom, okay, good guy. He mandated also in about three quarters of the, of the uh, localities in, in California, wherever there are significant cases, wear your mask. So that's my main message. This is real. We're working on vaccines. Okay. Yeah. There's no guarantee that anything's going to work. Right. Right. We're speeding up the process. This is exactly the kind of work I did for 30 years. Right. And, um, and it's noble work and we have to do it. And we're not going to get out of this crisis until we have a vaccine. We have no therapeutics and we have no vaccine right now. What we have is a couple of drugs like remdesivir that That's alleviate heard, yeah. a little bit the, de- the, de- the deadly consequences, but it is not a cure. So there's nothing out there right now that's going to save you if you get this. So yeah, what you get Pfizer, is Pfizer mask, has some stay stuff away from big gatherings. I know I'm going on, but this is really important. <laughs> right. <laughs> stay away from big gatherings. Don't go to the bars. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so the bars, and, bars here are closed now. Again, bars here are closed now, yeah. but they're not closed everywhere, right. and they only just reclosed. That's but, true. You, know, you gotta, you gotta use common sense. You gotta use common sense because it's going to take a while. And even if the vaccine comes out, it's got to be safe and effective. Yeah, it we takes, can't have any old thing. Yeah, it takes it's time for them safe. to test it and make well, sure that a lot of clinical trials. But we don't. You know, there's a lot of anti-vaxxers out there. All right, and already there's saying 20 percent of the population will not take this vaccine and right. if that's we're not going to get over this crisis yeah my message to everybody is believe in science don't believe in the politicians believe in science dr fauci is a hero to our country here mm-hmm. here yeah. take him take him seriously yeah he, yeah you and don't uh, hear much from him now but yeah i, I was really yeah. paying attention to everything well, he said exactly. he's been interviewed a couple of times in the last few days again appearing a little bit so listen to what he says. Yeah. Yep. And um, can we? Um, you know, one of the criticisms from those right wingers is, uh, oh, it, they they changed the scientists changed their prescriptions. But you know what? That's because we didn't know anything about COVID until six months ago. We know nothing. We're learning. We're at the beginning of this process. Yeah. Need more data. The recommendations yeah. change because. We get new data. That's what science is all about. It's a learning curve. Yeah, people that right? people that don't like science to learning something. People that and don't, it takes time to do that. Sorry. Yeah, the, the people that don't like science or believe science don't seem to understand why scientists uh, change their mind. And it's 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 one of the beautiful things about science is it's all about adjusting your perspective based on new information. Yeah. Exactly. And we get new information every day. We're learning there's new strains of this virus, too. Uh, so it all has to be calibrated to that. So what I did was I made the medicines and the max vaccines. Now we're going to try and accelerate that process. OK, it normally would take maybe four years to 10 years to develop something. OK, we're trying to get that down to a year. So the way we're doing that is we're compressing the timeline, research and development. We're going to start producing these vaccines in the factory, which is what I did. I came up with the process and then put them into the plants, the manufacturing plants. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna manufacture these vaccines before we even know that they're safe and effective. Right. And if they work, they'll go on the market. And if not, we'll throw them away. So that's a lot of money, but you know what? We're in a real crisis. So this is going to save two thirds of the time and it will get to people much quicker that way. So I'm totally in favor of this strategy of simultaneously developing a vaccine and producing it. Are we so to a point away, but the ones that do work, we will put out on the market. Are we to a point now where we have some candidates uh, for vaccines? Now I did, yeah. I did hear movement. that there were yeah. a couple. Well, we don't um, have, we don't, we won't know until really the end of this year. 
We're putting it into uh, th tens of thousands of patients now. There's three leading vaccines here oh, okay. and in England right now. So it's going to take time to get all that data. They're getting the they're getting the volunteers. They're giving them some injections, so they have experimental quantities. But it takes weeks and months to get that 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 data. So hopefully later in the summer they'll be able to say, yeah, this is starting to look good, or it's not looking good. Um, but to actually get all the data to say whether it's fully safe and fully effective will be the end of this year, early next year. Right. Yeah. I hadn't even heard that, that they were, that they had a, a vaccine candidate. So that's, uh, that's, that's yeah, cool. they, Pfizer, they have some promising. Yeah. Things. We have candidates, but that doesn't mean because you got to run scientists. Most of the stuff we do fails. <laughs> okay. That's yeah. why we got to have a lot of shots on goal. Yeah. We got to have multiple candidates. Yeah, Isn't it something like we, we only, <laughs> We only know what's true by uh, by counting out what what is wrong. Like basically, like basically, right. we dis if we disprove enough things, then we can figure out what's true. Yes, yeah. hopefully we'll come up with something that works. I so. wonder if we can maybe d does Gene have a uh, a website or something we could throw out if people because I know that on Twitter people love those masks and Gene yeah. Gene used to actually work on the shuttle, right? What you can do is. Um, on Facebook, just Gene Wright, W R I G H T, J E A N W R I G H T, and uh, look, you just look her up on on Facebook and Twitter. And you can put it online afterwards too. She does have, you know, websites. Um, actually, here I'll show it on. I can show it on. So the sisters. Screen. So, so sisters. Yeah, so sisters. Yeah. Yeah, so sister space creations. Okay. Yeah, actually we looked that up once once before on the show, right? So yeah, yeah so Gene, why don't you just make creations. a quick wait? There you oh. go. Here's Gene saying <laughs> quick hello. Yeah, so so anybody <laughs> anybody that's watching the stream or watches the video later, they can uh, they can see right here just how to find it on Facebook. Um, and right. also since I, I'm a terrible host, uh, I skipped right over the fact that you have your own media outlet that you do, uh, Space Up Close. And you also have a website where you sell prints like the one that's behind you, right? Well, I sell them basic. Uh, yeah, just contact me if you're interested. Oh, okay. Yes, and I have pictures like here, and and uh, we were talking about the uh, you know the fairing boat. So you can contact me. Yeah, and 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 that's that's Ken Kramer, uh, and it's all E's. So any of you Seinfeld fans out there, it is not Kramer with an A. <laughs> that's right all e's no a's yeah all e's no a's <laughs> but you can contact me through space up close yeah and uh and you do an outreach on facebook and twitter facebook and twitter you can right. contact me there right. too and i've got your uh well i've actually got a picture pulled up of yours right now but um let's see right here it's ken underscore kramer right um Right. Let's see. Uh, what next? Okay. That one right there. That one with 39A and 40 in the same picture. Ken, you killed that picture. Yeah. Man. Yeah, that was neat. Yeah. So, so this last week we we mentioned that oh, there that was one. supposed yes. to be a, a Starlink launch. Of course, it was supposed to be on Friday. And as if you're watching this, you probably already know. Oh, look at that. He's already got it printed out. <laughs> nice. Wow. See that? Very it's got a nice. big industrial printer there. Yeah, see, here's the Falcon 9 that was scrubbed, mm -hmm. right? And there mm -hmm. is, there's uh, the pad, there's the liquid oxygen tank, and then there's a lot of glare, I guess, but over here. Well, I've got it over here on my screen right here. I'm showing. Yeah, how's yeah. that? Well, they could, they could see it on the left side of the screen here. Uh, right here is actually the uh, the other Falcon 9 that, that would... Uh, in a few right. days time and has now launched uh, the GPS three satellite. Uh, of course right. it doesn't have the, uh, it doesn't have the, uh, the payload on top. So it doesn't have the fairings right. and everything. Of course. Now they do, they have been leaving the, uh, the payload on top for Starlink uh, launches, I guess, because it's their own and they, they feel that they can risk it. But as far as uh, anybody else's payloads, they don't, they don't do static fire with the payload on top. That's right. But we, that's right. So we don't yeah. do static fires like with the capsule on. Well, actually, we did yeah. though. We did. I but think that NASA was, wants that them was to. An exception. That was an exception because NASA wanted to test it in case there was a real abort. 
But other than that, they normally do not. Right. Um, and for Starlink, right. For Starlink, it's their own satellites. They can take a chance. They can save time and money, which is what it's all about. Yeah, because they never have to go horizontal. As long as everything is okay. Now, um, of course, on Friday, we went out there and we, we set remotes and then found out two or three hours later that they were scrubbing the launch, you know, and then everybody yeah. had to go right back out there and pick up their cameras. Um, and then there was this weird thing where everyone, you know, we're trying to, we're trying to be gumshoes and figure out when it's being delayed to, because that it was Friday. Is it moving to, to Sunday or like Monday? Is it going to after GPS and, uh, and Gavin from uh, SpaceX fleet was kind of trying to help, everyone figure that out like well what is uh what's of course i still love you doing and you know well just read the instructions is leaving wait which which day was that i think i have saturday i saw it leave actually yeah 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 so yeah it was just read the instructions was leaving on uh on well there's the that's the friday, 26th yeah it was right. friday it was the right. day of the scrub it was the day of the scrub yep and yep. then uh, I both of those static fires, actually. But you know what? It was suspicious to me, I'll tell you, because for uh, for the Starlink, because it took over 16 hours. Yeah. That 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 took place at uh, 6.30 p.m. Mm -hmm. We didn't hear it until the next morning. Yeah, yeah I should have listened to you because we were <laughs> that, they did a GPS static fire within a half an hour. So I, I knew, you know, it seemed like it was really weird. So when they actually scrubbed it on Friday, it, it didn't surprise me too much. Yeah. The surprising because part was that we we went ahead with remote setup. Uh, that's the surprising yeah. thing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um. Yeah. So and now they obviously had a serious problem because you know what they had to lower that rocket. Did they, they lower? Because I, I never found out if they did lower it. They did. They did lower it. It's not at the pad anymore. Um. So yeah, we were all wondering what the order was going to be. Mm -hmm. But it's a serious problem if they have to lower it and wait so long and bring the, well, the real sign is the fact they brought the drone ship back. Right. They didn't leave it out there. Right. So yeah. it wasn't a matter of a quick fix and we could just launch it a day or two after after the other one. Right. right. And now it's Clearly more than a week after brought the drone ship back. Right. Yeah. In fact, we were talking that night and, you know, after they'd done the static fire and, and you were expressing concerns and I'm like, ah, nah, it's not, it's not unprecedented. We've seen this before and <laughs> I should have listened to the doc. Um, let's see. So one of, one of the uh, adventures that we had together, uh, other than, you know, hanging out at the port and watching booster recovery stuff, uh, a, a couple of weeks ago, we went out and chased the train. Yes, and that was that was a pretty interesting day. Uh, just kind of hanging out in the heat, watching watching the drawbridge <laughs> go up and down. Um, let's see, I've got your pictures pulled up here, uh, but it, Great. yeah, want to show. Yeah, what do we um, for SLS? There you okay. go. Yes, I wanted you to pull that up. Yeah. My little SLS uh, uh, patch there. <laughs> well, there you go. Yes, yeah. so was the boosters on the side, yeah. right? The core stage is in the middle. Yeah. Uh, we saw the SRBs, which is basically from the shuttle, okay, except there's five of them instead of four segments. Yeah. So that's what you and I saw. Right. Yep. So there there are right. 10 of these segments. Um, I'm, I'm guessing they don't have the cone. They, they, they didn't have the cone. They, I didn't have any reason to think they had the cone. Um, but what do, we, what do we know about the progress right now with these? They are making progress. They actually have them in the uh, rotation facility, which is right next to the VAB. And they're, they, I just saw today, they're starting to stack them. Really? So they're not waiting around. It's, they're, they're moving. So rotation and, facility, uh, that's to rotate uh, them. That, ro sorry, that rotates them vertical. Is that what the rotation facility is? It, yeah. It takes them from yeah, horizontal to yeah, vertical. Yeah, exactly. They're horizontal, right, on the train. They come horizontal on the train. And now we got to stack, r rotate them. <laughs> <laughs> rotate them vertical right mm -hmm. and then put one on top of the other right that's what we're going to do and um so they, they rotate them in that in that um, booster rotation facility next to the vab and then they bring them into the vab and then they stack them on the mobile on, on the mobile launcher so it's uh, the solids get stacked before anything is that right they get stacked before anything and during the shuttle era it's really funny I saw it once where the the, the, the mobile launcher was uh, was was moving, 
with just two solids on it. <laughs> just two solids, nothing in between. There was no external tank. Oh, that's so, so weird yeah. because you, you'd so think it, it kind of – it seems like the, the, the center core – is going to be what kind of holds the the two solids up, right? But it's but no, really the solids are are, are yeah. steady rockets on their own. And the the good thing right. about the solids is they they come from that ICBM line of uh, lineage. Mm-hmm. So those are made for long term storage. So once they get those set up, they're good. All they have to do is they can put them vertical. They can keep them however they need to do to store them, mm-hmm. and they will be good for years. And so the um the, and like the space shuttle was when it's standing on the pad it's standing on the solids like nothing else has contact with the launch pad is that right is anything supporting the orbiter the the, the, the shuttle yeah the shuttle okay is attached <laughs> there's three attachments one here and two at the bottom <laughs> right and they are they they get attached to the to the external tank and the external tank is attached to the, to the two solids right all right so that and you know just like here yeah. just like here yeah, that's then, what, that's why yeah, the, the S- side. Of course, now we got Orion on the top. There you go. Safer actual shuttle. Yeah. There we as go. A, as a <laughs> model model. Dur- during the shuttle era, like those those solids were what kept the the whole thing standing upright. Right. Right. That's what sat on the mobile launcher. Exactly. With because, bolts. because they're heavy four, too. Four bolts. four bolts on each solid. Giant. Giant, gigantic bolts. I, yeah, I held them. Giant bolts. frangible. They're, really they're called frangible bolts. Frangible bolts, exactly. And I'm trying 70, to remember the name. Seventy pounds a piece and twenty nine inches long. Oh man. <laughs> oh, they're they're heavy. Yeah. And then there's the bolt catchers. You know, when they when they when they fire the fry, uh, pyrotechnics, they got to catch the bolt so the bolt doesn't fly into the rocket. So this is oh, not good. But right. yeah, the solids are the first thing, and you and I saw that. Yeah. And uh, thank. you. For uh, the information about that, that was it, well. Really hot day, but we had a great day, and and the and the way that happened was I was really reaching out to you to see if you knew anything, and then it was just yeah. kind of like no, but if you find something, <laughs> right? <laughs> so we worked together, and we were lucky. Yeah, persistent. And we were lucky. We met some NASA people, and uh, they informed us it's not coming now. Come back a little later. Yeah, yeah. There and was. We a- got back- and then we saw we saw those trains. If you got the pictures, you can pull them up. Yeah, yeah. No, I've I've got them right here. And there was a little bit of concern about you know whether whether or not we'll get into trouble. But you know I'm I'm you know I'm old country boy from Polk County, Florida. You know we we hop fences and all that kind of stuff. You know all you got to do is say, oh, I don't know. the worst that's ever going to happen, they'll, they'll ask you to leave. I've got so much right. experience with being asked to leave someplace, but never yeah. never got in, into any trouble. <laughs> No, we asked many times that day, and yeah. we were okay. Yeah, and, and there is a picture. There's that picture, yeah. man. Zoom in on it. Zoom in I on that picture. I can't. Yeah, yeah. Zoom in on oh. it. So this picture right here is the one. If you look at all their faces, they're all smiling and and laughing. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. You're in the caboose because yeah. you're in the middle of the track. Yeah. yeah, all of them were smiling, man. That's a great picture. Yeah, you can't tell from a picture, but this is going <laughs> away from us here. This is they're going around the bend to actually turn south and go into Kennedy Space Center. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's we got really, and they waved at us at that point too. You know, right? They were yeah, it was cool. It was like, you know, there's a little bit of nervousness about how you know should we be here or whatever. But it seemed like when it finally started, like they they were almost welcoming. You know, it was like they they thought it was neat yeah. that, that we were interested and wanted to wanted to see him come by. It was it was yeah. really cool, and it was a it was a a, a great climax to a, a very long day, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that and that Artemis one will launch, you know, probably about end of next year, and towards the end of next year, that's, right? They're, they're building the well, they built the core stage. I saw the core stage of Mashu, Gene and I, mm-hmm. and they shipped it to Stennis, where it's doing it's going to do the green run test. That's delayed by COVID two. It was going to be this summer. Now it'll probably be, you know, October or so, and then it'll arrive here at the Kennedy Space Center. Um, by the end of the this year, early next year. Now, when did the uh, destructive the test stage here will get attached? If you got your little model there for the shuttle, you know this is longer than the. Uh, it's about twenty percent longer than the um, the external tank, liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen. And so you and I saw that. That is yeah. what's going to be on the test flight that goes to the moon. 
Where was right? Send Orion around the moon, unmanned. Yeah, uncrewed. Uncrewed. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, we won't. We won't burn you at, at the stake for that. We're going to launch the uh, the uncrewed Orion there it capsule. Is. Now, is that right. that's not Orion? That's that's Starliner. This is it? actually Starliner, but you get the idea. They look very similar. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> and uh, and yeah, and that's gonna so that'll launch on top of this. But you and I saw it, yeah. and um, I've seen Orion too. And Becca was there too, and she's usually on the show, but she is working right now. She couldn't get out. Ah, oh, too bad. Yeah, um, I feel it was, like- nice, it was nice to see her that day. Yeah, we had fun. It was it was a good day, and it wasn't as hot as it has been here lately. Oh yeah. Um, I think I feel like we should move and talk about some other stuff. This I wanted to just point on this uh, that they have completed the painting of the meatball, the repainting of the meatball on the VAB. Uh, we got to see that. That was one good thing that came from the the scrub day for Starlink uh, last week. Um, but one thing that I thought was really neat is somebody posted a time lapse of the of the whole process it looks like oh yeah wow. isn't that neat and this yeah takes i me- think NASA, well, i saw that today i think nasa put one up yeah this is it was tj cooney that posted this but i'm not sure that he he is the one that created this um but yeah it's just i love time lapse and so i thought this was really neat and you can really tell a difference you know you see that kind of dingy look yeah. and then whenever it's done it just looks so shiny and beautiful i, I wonder how long like how often it's they, they have to repaint it yeah which, like, i don't like, know when was the last time they repaint, repainted it's been, it's been a while the um 2004, this uh-huh. it was paid for by the stimulus money when we had the last great recession around 2009 that was one of the projects that was funded was repainting the uh, outside of the vab it had a lot of had a lot of damage to it right so I heard Gene oh four oh five. Well, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. Oh, um, okay. I know we had a lot of damage from hurricanes, so we lost a lot of panels outside the VAB. So I just assumed it was done at the same time. But you're probably right. yeah, it was done to, as part of the stimulus package um, when you guys were younger. This in is your 2004. Time. Whatever. Right? <laughs> you're gonna think this is funny, but you know the one thing that disappointed me. Uh-huh. I was told a long time ago that each star on the NASA meatball represents ten years of NASA history. Oh. So I just assumed there'd be another there'd be another star up there. So when I didn't see it, I wrote Bob Cabana and I said, "What's up? What happened to the sixth star?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're talking about the the like the bigger stars. Yeah. So there are five. Yes, of them. Yeah. Okay. Is that true? Do they really add more? Have they added more stars to it? Yeah, for years. When oh. I started working there, that was always what we were told. <laughs> oh, that is so interesting. I had no idea. Yeah, I didn't even know that either. That's really well, I couldn't find how much paint they used, but there was 6,000 gallons for the flag, but I can't find for the meatball. Oh, wow. That's a 6, lot. 6,000 yeah. gallons. <laughs> That's a lot. Well, it's a giant building, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I've been up there a few times. <laughs> oh, wow. I think that's the biggest flag that ex- that's flown anywhere in the United States. It's as big as a basketball yeah. court, right? That's what they always say mm-hmm. on the yeah. tours. It's, it's as big as a yeah. basketball court. 209 feet high by 110 feet wide. Mm-hmm. You should do the tours. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I've done, I've done Google. them. I, every time someone has come uh, down from Tennessee to visit me, I've, I've made them go to the visitor complex and do one of the tours with me. <laughs> well, then you probably know this, too, that the countdown clock is the second most iconic fl- clock in the world with Big Ben being Oh, humbled. yes, of course. <laughs> um, it's true. Okay, so we so we did end up with a launch uh, since last week's show. Uh, we launched the GPS three uh, space vehicle number three. Uh, that's the third GPS three refers to the third generation of GPS satellites, and this is the third one of those. Now SpaceX has launched one of them before. They launched the first one, and then ULA. Yeah, twenty eighteen. I was there for that one. What, what, when was that? December of 2018, oh, so okay. about a year and a half ago. Wow, I yeah. can't, it seems seems, seems right. more recent, but and then the yeah, second then ULA, one, ULA uh, launched a, a one also the last on the um, Delta IV Medium last summer. That was the last one. That's right, Magellan. And and then uh, and now there's this one, and there I believe SpaceX is going to launch the, the remaining in the series. How many are there? Yes. What they told us at the briefing. How many more are there? 
there there well there's going to be a, a, at least 10 okay. at least 10 and then there's some more follow on ones so the constellation right now has 31 right gps and this will replace one of the aging satellites and then they're going to keep replacing the aging satellites with new ones so there's at least 10 in this series and then there's a follow on series too and that'll so that'll go on for probably a decade or so oh, okay. oh that'll be going on for many many years many years many years it'll, yeah. it'll just keep cycling and when yeah, when yeah. will we actually notice a difference? Will we ever notice a difference on our? We GPS? will notice a difference with this one, but only if we're traveling to somewhere like Europe, if we're within the the range of the um the Magellan constellation. Well, they're not that, um they're because they're not right geostationary, now, right? No, they are not geostationary. And we were just talking about this uh, before the show. Um, I was just reading a TechCrunch article, which was the first article that popped up on on Google. And it uh, referred to the uh, GPS satellites as geostationary. And I just kind of want to... Oh, that was the part. Yeah, that was the... the Medium Earth orbit. Medium Earth orbit, 12,000. Medium Earth orbit, 500 miles versus, you know, 17,000. So it's considered medium Earth orbit. Right. Absolutely. You know, your signal bounces between, they have a whole bunch of uh, GPS satellites and it bounces between them because they're constantly moving. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, stars and are going to be even in a lower orbit. Oh, and yeah, so that area will be even less mm -hmm. than. Well, Starlink is actually uh, going to have in their final shell that they're planning to build, it's going to be out in medium Earth orbit. Right, right. right. Right, lower, lower think, than GPS, but much. It, it's going to be a little lower than GPS, but not too much lower uh, because they they're kind of looking for that same kind of coverage. So right. GPS kind of works because you are within sight of at least three satellites at one time. A fourth one gives you a very accurate. It's like sixty yards of of guaranteed accuracy through GPS, uh, with the ability to interact with both the um, Roscosmos uh, uh, Glanos. Uh, constellation. Uh, constellation and the Magellan constellation in Europe, the ability to interact between them actually can reduce that down to a guaranteed two yards. Oh, wow. So it, it, the in, there's a great increase in the accuracy that, that we will see very shortly once uh, probably one or two more and we'll uh, be to the where we would see that here. And is this something that the GPS devices are already compatible with, or do we have to step up to whatever's next? It's, it's the satellites being compatible with one another okay. is, is the issue, right? So uh, right now you could get this level of accuracy, but you would have to have a special device that can read uh, that constellation and GPS. So you can get one that works with GLaNOS so that you can have you know, increased accuracy. If you're traveling to Europe, you would, you would get a device like this if you needed a, a, a GPS for like Russia. Gotcha. All right. Well, cool. So, well, there's another one up there right now. Awesome. Absolutely. Um, and then uh, they, so we got the fairings and Matt uh, went out there in the middle of the night because <laughs> he knew that there probably wouldn't be too many people out there in the middle of the night. And, um, and you see, so you got there at what time? Like two thirty-three. Yeah, two like two two a.m. Um, and he was able to get some great photos. Uh, we were talking on the phone, and you know, kind of just you know, just photography talk. Like, what's the best method, and all this kind of stuff. And I got to tell you, whenever I woke up and saw what he got, I was rather impressed. Um, hey, that's a good shot. Yeah, they're they're very good. Now, of course, you know, SpaceX had them covered up with these tarps like they do. It, it almost seems like, and I'm sure this isn't the case, but it almost seems like if the fairing is intact, it will be covered by a tarp. If it is not yeah. intact, it will not be covered. <laughs> it's what yeah. it seems. It, it's what it seemed like. Cause I know that uh, the last one that I shot in the middle of the night, there was one with a, with a tarp covering it. And then there was another one that was not covered and it was all busted up. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, not really a general rule. I'm sure it's not, but yeah, that's just what it seems like. Yeah. But they, they scooped them out of the ocean, right? So they didn't use the big nets on the top. Which is interesting time. because they've, they they talked about, you know, doing an update on their software. And, yeah. and they still, as far as we know, haven't attempted a catch yet. So, you know, we're all kind of waiting to see. We want to see both of them get their first catch. 
you know, and, th- and see, this is what they look like whenever they have, you know, well, they have, have the net caught, deployed. They have caught uh, three of them, I believe. They have caught three of them. Just read the instructions. Hasn't caught any, I think, in midair. You mean? But, uh, it, it did catch, it did catch one. Yeah. Or Miss Miss Chief. Miss Chief is the is the the newer of the two, and right. yeah, Miss Tree has caught uh, all three, and Miss Chief hasn't caught right. any yet. Yeah, exactly. So oh, I, I'm talking about the right. I misspoke, but yes, exactly. One of them <laughs> caught all three of them. Right. Yeah. So there's a lot going on, Ken. A lot going on. We're still waiting to see him. <laughs> You know, catch both. It it it'll be a really cool day for for all the all the fleet fans. I don't know what that. We're we're picking up CB radio or something. <laughs> niner niner. Um, and as as far as uh, the rest of the the SpaceX fleet stuff, uh, tomorrow, in fact, is when uh, the booster should be back on top of uh, just read the instructions. Um, as of right now, what do you got there? Last one. Let's see. Is this the see last that? one? This is the last one. That's a great shot. See, there's the, the guys on the bicycle. Yeah. And then you can see on the horizon, you can see their booster just coming in. That's awesome. And you see it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, now you see it. See that? So that's what we'll see maybe tomorrow afternoon. Right? Yeah, right, yeah. Uh, so Gavin of uh, SpaceX Fleet Updates, is uh, that's his prediction as of right now. Of course, always you know it's still a day out yeah always assume that that things can change uh in this industry but as of right now they're on on target to uh get here about uh like afternoon maybe early evening or so yeah. um and if so i think matt cutshaw's gonna be out there i know ken's gonna be out there regardless i should be out there yeah, yeah. it should yeah. be out there i'm hoping it, it all depends on what, on what time they come in but it did yeah it all depends let's see you know we'll see um what we hear tomorrow, tomorrow uh, by noon, if they're it's still on or not. Yeah, yeah, we'll know. It's we'll hot. know by noon. Um, let's see. Anything else about the launches or launch one launch this week? Because we've got um, we've got perseverance to talk about. We got perseverance exactly. Yeah, we had yeah. a we had actually like within just a few days of each other, we had two delay announcements, which is just. You know, it, they're still well within the window, but, you know, every time there's a delay, you just get a little more worried, you know, and you, and you, yeah. you know, they're, they're launching on a reliable rocket and, you know, I'm sure that they're going to get, you know, all their T's crossed and dotted, I's dotted and everything. But, you know, now we're, we're looking at no earlier than July 30th. Um, right. And we don't have a lot of information on why. All we know is that there was a, uh, there was a sensor. Uh, Tori actually responded to someone's question. He said that. Yeah. He said there an was oxygen a, sensor on the second stage. Was it oxygen sensor? Yeah. Yeah. Oxygen yeah. Sensor. I was there for the wet dress rehearsal. Actually. I saw it, mm-hmm. saw that it looked like, you know, it went fine. Yes. And that's really what they reported. But on data review, they, they, they discovered a problem. Okay. So this but, wasn't, you know, right. we only have three weeks three weeks to launch to Mars. Yeah. And that's what I give a lot of lectures about and I create the mosaics from, from the Mars rover. So we're now halfway through that period. It was nominally going to end August 11th. So, you know, July 30 to August 11th, that's only 11 days, but they think they can extend that to August 15th. So we will have about two weeks, but we don't know how long it's going to take to fix this, this issue. And the issue is that if we don't launch, we have to wait two, 26 months yeah, yeah. when Mars will yeah. fly again, and that's going to cost half a billion dollars. Yeah. And the problem with that is that's a lot of money, and that's going to come out of a future Mars mission. Right. Yes. So you know, we want to – here's what it looks like. Here's one of my, here's one of my mosaics. Oh, you, here, yeah. you put this mosaic together? I put this mosaic together. Oh, that's exactly. great. I created hundreds of these mosaics. And um, so you see, there's the head of the rover, and there's the body, and this is exactly the same except for the science instruments. Okay. So, um, and what is additional on here is we want to get get samples, right? Yes. Some little sample tubes. There's about two dozen of them, about the size of a pen. Mm-hmm. Okay, and they're going to collect. Soil. It's core samples. They have maybe organic molecules in it because they go into a dried out, dried out uh, uh, riverbed. Right. And then in 2026, we want to launch a fetch rover. So, but if we if this launches late, that will launch late, and then we won't have the money for the fetch rover. So, 
because you know Congress is very stingy with the money for science. So we really need this. We really need this to go. That was um, actually one thing I, I wanted to ask you about because I, I thought maybe you'd have some insight and you could explain to to lay people like myself. Obviously, I understand that that bringing samples back is much better than doing the science, you know, remotely. But what is it about having the samples here on Earth that makes makes that so important and and so much better for science? Because we can have all the most advanced science instruments analyzing those samples versus just two or three instruments on Mars that are very miniaturized and very limited. Right. It's like having the whole world of scientists, state-of-the-art instruments, analyzing the samples in every possible way you can. One thing you want to do is you want to see if these are chiral molecules. Okay, what does that mean? Yeah. That means that they, they, they rotate light. And why is that important? Because if they rotate light, that's an indication of biology. All right. Well, that is really hard to do on Mars. So there's only limited science instruments we can send to Mars. But if we bring them back here, you have all the in, in, intuity, in, ingenuity of the scientists, as well as every latest state of the art instrument working on it. Whereas these instruments were designed, you know, five, six, seven years ago. Right. So they're state of, state of the art as of then. They're not state of the art as of now. And okay? we get to hold on to them for uh, forever and whatever future uh technology there is to analyze it with yeah it's the same with the moon rocks right? right so there are samples from the apollo moon rocks that still haven't been analyzed for the same reason because of advances in science and analytical instruments things we can analyze for now that we didn't have that capability for 50 years ago yeah so we have those preserved samples from from the moon rocks from apollo from 50 years ago and some of them are still being open today and so, yeah, you can use the best, the most advanced, and you have a lot more of it if you bring it back here. But that all takes time, and that all takes money. Mars sample return, MSR, that's the holy grail of Martian science. We've been wanting to do this for 30 years. So now we're on the cusp. And so on, on, on our little rover, this is like Sojourner, but anyway, there's little sample tubes, and they're going to core into the, into the soil, into the rocks, and then they'll drop them in the soil, and then... In 2026, we will launch a fetch rover. It will fetch those samples from the ground, pick them up from the ground. And then put they'll in a little rocket. And that will ro go to Mars orbit. And then another ship has to come from Earth to meet that in Mars orbit, transfer those samples. If you've ever seen um, 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 uh, the movie from a few years ago, how can I forget the name Martian. of it? Martian. The Martian. Martian, right. And they sent, and they sent the new crew... To rescue the Mark, Mark, Mark Watney, Watney, yeah. That there's a it's a very complicated process. We need three different spaceships to get that sample back, right. and it's going to take ten years. Hopefully, be be back here in twenty thirty one. So, you know, with limited budgets, we really need to get this thing off the ground so we can not only get it back, but we can spend that money on science instead of putting it in storage for two years. Half a billion dollars—that's a lot of money. That that'll pay for a mission. Half a billion will pay for a mission. I was listening to the uh, We Martians podcast today, and one of the things that I guess I didn't realize was that the the sample return, whenever it comes back, they're not even going to bother with a parachute. It's just going to crash into the ground, into the desert. Yeah, they're going to they're going to do a Corona style. Uh, there was a, a program back in the day, one of the very first. Uh, uh, spy satellite programs was called a uh, project Corona uh -huh. and they used uh, re-entry vehicles on canisters of film that were dropped from satellites and they would catch them over the Pacific. Yeah. Well, this will actually hit. I, I think they said that it's going to actually crash into ground, like act on land, like yeah, maybe probably in the Utah desert. Yeah. yeah probably the Utah in desert. Isolated. That's crazy. Because, That's you know, insane. All kinds of people worried about bringing Martian life back and, the Andromeda strain and contaminating Earth yeah, with truth. something. So it has to be in an isolated area. Well, what about you? You're you're an organic scientist. Is do you, in your in your mind is there any possibility of a Martian bug with a capability of infecting us with anything? Just absolutely, it's possible. Okay, all right, for sure, good, good. for sure. <laughs> all right, good. All right, so so they're not being crazy. No, no, no. You have to take strict, you got to, we take very strict 
quarantine um, sterilization practices when we're going to Mars, right? Because we we got when we when we're going. Like here's here's curiosity. Another mosaic I made. Okay, this is at the Air and Space Museum. Here you see Curiosity. There it is, taking a sample. As Mount Sharp in the background, and this this here is an ancient lake bed. So so it's got to be sterilized because when we go to Mars, we don't want to bring Earth life, right? We don't want to bring Earth life. Right. We want to discover Mars life. Right. And so when we go there and we want to bring the Mars life back, we we got to make sure that you know it's not got something in it that we're not resistant to, like COVID, okay? Right. Yeah. So we don't or want worse. anything like that. So it has to be- Mars COVID. Because you don't know. If the DNA is different, you don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah. So it's gotta be in a in a high security lab, but, uh, but it will be the greatest thing to discover life on another planet. And Mars is, is really good because there's water there. All the ingredients for life, or on Mars, we've got water, we've got organic molecules, and we got energy, mm -hmm. and we got the inorganic molecules they can live off of. So all the ingredients for life are on Mars. What we don't know is if there was that spark that created that bacteria. We also know that there's liquid water on Mars, mm -hmm. so beneath the surface. Right. We can't have liquid water on the surface because of the low atmospheric pressure. Yeah, they found one uh, lake that's like- uh, Chance to find life. The, the, that we can reach now. Titan and Europa, that's another story. Well, they yeah. probably have a better chance, but that's that's another mission for another day. But but anyway, that's what it's gonna look like when it when it's taking its samples. And there's the robotic arm. It, this one has a robotic arm too. Lift it up a little higher. And um, it's got two chemistry labs, and the new rover will also have chemistry labs. It'll analyze also, but the key samples are the ones we're gonna be bringing back. Right. Uh, lift, so lift it up a little more. We couldn't see what you were pointing at before. Yeah. If you lift it up a little more, uh, we couldn't see what you were pointing. Like lift it like up vertically. There you go. Ah, yes, the the mass there, the arm. Yeah. You can see the arm, the robotic arm. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot of glare, I guess. Oh, that's good, like that. See that? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> The robotic arm. See the robotic arm there yeah. in the middle on the table. See it? Are you looking? <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Thank you. So it's I've created hundreds of these, and I just got a uh, another request from another uh, TV producer. They want to use my Phoenix mosaic from the Phoenix lander that landed on ice, water ice, in the northern poles of Mars ten years ago, twelve years ago. And these are all images you're uh, you're pulling off of the NASA archive, right? And you're stitching together. I stitch them together exactly. It can be, a, you know, it could be five or six, or it could be a couple of hundred. Oh, I like, used one of your mosaics in my thesis. Ah, really? That's where I remember your name from. I I used one of your mosaics in my thesis. Which ro which rover was it? I don't remember which one. It's uh, been so long since I wrote this thing. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Well, that's really. But cool. I I, re I remember uh, seeing your name uh, in my thesis. Awesome. Oh, thank you. That's very nice. Yeah, I have APOD. You know APOD, Astronomy Picture of the Day? Right. I have 14 APODs, and most of them are from the Mars rovers. Oh, wow. So I've been doing this a long time. And then, you know, like I said, I give lectures if anybody's interested. Yeah, I was, I I was wanting you to talk about your, yeah, you, you, you do the outreach over in Titusville at one of the hotels, right. right? Yes, yes. And I sell my pictures, too, that helps support my website. Yeah, the quality in the Kennedy Space Center, quality in exit 215 right off of 95. Usually, the, you know, the day before the launch, I'm there. So if oh, we have this launch on the 8th, I'll be there on the 7th, right? I'll be there on the 7th next week. Well, be and careful because we got... You want to ask about uh, any of the missions, that mission and, and anything else. Yeah, okay. And it's free. It's free. It's free, y'all. Come here, Dr. Great. Kramer, talk about space. Um, let's see, we, let's, we should be, yeah, we should, we should move on. Okay, so uh, today, well, okay, actually back up a little bit. So a couple days, or no, I guess this was just yesterday. Uh, ULA posted this image of a BE-4 oh, that they yeah. just received. Um, mm. Of course, uh, not to be a spoiler, but Chris B. and Eric Berger both asked, 
uh, is it a is it a flight engine or a Pathfinder? And Tori Bruno said, <gasps> development Pathfinder. It's a Pathfinder, I believe he said. Yeah. yeah. So this isn't actually the point. engine that's going to fly. But look at this thing. This thing is so super yeah. detailed. And yeah. Wow. What? That's how complicated rocket science really is. <laughs> yeah, that this is just a Pathfinder. <laughs> yeah. It's not even a really. What you have on the screen, just it's very small, but do what? I saw the picture. Yeah, I well, did see the picture. Well, if you click on that, if you click on that box, uh, then oh, then it'll box. it'll blow it up. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So so yeah, they just received this, and this is uh, this would be in Decatur, right? Yeah, they just got yep. this in Decatur. Um, I don't yes, know, it, it's just it's just super exciting. I, I can't wait to see Vulcan fly with. I'm trying to tell you, man. Ooh, mm. that's gonna be a sexy beast. It's gonna be so uh, beautiful. The BE4 with its with its beautiful blue flame, and then the solids on the side with the yellow. It's just God. it's gonna, that's be, gonna gorgeous. be picture material. You guys are gonna get great shots. Does, oh, remotes are gonna be glorious. <laughs> yeah. Does anybody remember? And, and, Six solids too. It's up to the, six. Solids. Up to six. Yeah. yeah. What, six. Does anybody remember what the uh, the maiden flight payload is? Oh, isn't it moon on. related? I think it's moon related, isn't it? Yes, yeah, I believe it's a, a series of satellites heading to the moon or a series yeah. of landers. That might be yeah, the uh, might be the astrobotic lander. One of one of those clips landers. Right. Oh, yeah. be on that flight. Yeah. That's yeah. commercial and then lunar Dream payload Chaser, services. Right? Oh. On the second flight. The Dream Chaser is at second flight? Oh. Yeah, Dream Chaser is at second yeah. flight. That's right. And that, that aeroshell, right, the, the, the body, that was just finished out in Colorado. So they're they're moving. They're yeah. moving. Moving and shaking. Moving yeah, they, the got, they, got their... they get that vehicle flying next year. Yep. Uh, let's see. Daryl in the chat said he thought the uh, the maiden flight was supposed to be Dream Chaser. That. It, it, it it's sound, one or the other. I can't yeah. remember it. And maybe maybe they're swappable. Who knows? Yep. Um, but I would the be first, curious to see how many how many solids they're throwing on that first one because ah, uh, it's going to be glorious. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the configuration is going to be uh, it looks like two solids. Two solids. See, that's kind of actually what I want for yeah. for from a photography standpoint because i want that blue flame in the middle and i don't want it to be obscured by any solids but i want it to yeah. have some solids we want solids solids are the most exciting to me yeah because you do that <laughs> paper trail to orbit exactly the second flight is scheduled for september 2021 and that's going to be dream chaser and that's going to have four solids Ooh. Uh, okay so dream chaser gets four hey becca's in the chat she said hi guys miss you all hello What's up, hello Bex? Beck. Um, I don't see her, but I guess I'll take your word for it that she's there. She's there. Yeah, she's in the chat. Um, okay, so this talk about the BE4 got me thinking about Blue Origin. And I was, this was about an hour before I sent all you guys the invite. I was like, you know what? I, I should just run out to the beach real quick and get a shot of, uh, of 36, LC 36. Yeah. Yeah, and I so, got a shot of it today. I forgot to put it online, but yeah, it's massive. It's Absolutely and it's go. It's it's moving. It is moving along. Like you know, I feel like every time anybody, including myself, we we post a photo of the Blue Origin pad, we're like, wow, it's really coming together. It's really coming together. But look at this. Look at how much it really is coming together. And and look at uh, and look at the render. Oh yeah, there it is. So yes, there's exactly. the render. And there's real life. So right here, so you've got you've got two lightning towers. One, okay, see, I was confused when I was seeing it. Just I was, the other day I was out on the beach and I was getting confused at what I was looking at because I was like, one of them looks like a lightning tower that's almost done, but I don't know what this other one is. But now I see this render and they it like yeah. so one is like a more like a triangle and one is more squared and i'm not sure why that is i think it's so this one is going to support uh vertical integration i think yeah that that's yeah, what i think. like service structure yeah right and maybe in the future it'll be altered to become a crew access arm yeah yep. possible yep. those but towers are towers 600 feet there. do what those towers are maybe 600 feet one completer. 600 feet Okay, look. Okay, so we can look at this and okay, so look at this about the between the the second and third rung from the top and then we can look and look here. 
So like right around in here is how tall New Glenn is going to be. Like God, up to here. Huge. <laughs> so yes, yeah. finally yeah, it's like million pounds of thrust if i remember right i think one of the one of the most frustrating things to me like i, I always like to i i deal with tourists a lot i, I deliver pizza so I, I talk to tourists all the time and and in the the two usually usually about two days before launch if i'm working i start telling anybody if they're staying at a hotel or whatever i'm like you know there's a launch coming up you know and stuff and they always want to know where do I have to go? And I'm like, well, you can go right out to the beach. You can see it from the beach. Unfortunately, you can't see it lift off because it's hidden by things. But this pad is 100% visible from anywhere on Cocoa Beach, Cape Canaveral Beach, yeah. anywhere. It's, it's, and it's, Jetty Park. yeah, Down Jetty Park. Well, that's why you should come to my outreach because I can tell people where they can see exactly the launches from. And Titusville is a great place Titus to watch. Yeah, Multiple. Titusville is one of the best. Now, but this pad here, Titusville will not be one of the best. The best this will one be you can't see. right. This is the only one you really can't see. Right. Yeah, you, Jetty Park will be a good spot for this yeah, one. Jetty yeah. Park, Cherry Down. Yeah. Or literally <laughs> anywhere on the beach. Anywhere you know, on the because beach. most people, a lot of times, so the thing that I find with tourists is, especially the ones that have no idea that they're in such a historic place, you know, so, so many times I'm like, you know, there's a launch coming up and they're like, launch, what are you talking about? Like rocket launch? They're like, what, what do you mean? Yeah. Like, do you know where you are? Like, this is, you know, I'm always like, this is where people watch Neil and Buzz go to the moon. This is where people watch the shuttles take off. You know, this is a very historic place. This is, Cocoa Beach is known for being a great place to go right. to watch these launches. A lot, of, a lot of times people just have no idea. I um, thought it was just my dream and genie. so true. You know, when I do outreach in the hotel, I have signs up the days before. Uh -huh. And they see my sign there out on the, in the lobby. Mm -hmm. And they often say, oh, my God, there's a launch? They just came. And yeah. they have no idea what's going on. And then they find out about the launch because of my signs. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I tell them. Yeah. Any, anybody that comes here and they didn't know about the launch – and I, and I get to tell them, I say, you just won the vacation lottery because yes. you, you are here and you're, you're on the beach, you know, maybe you're go, getting on a cruise or something or whatever, but you get to see this that not many people get to see. Um, exactly. But my point with that was that usually they're not willing to drive anywhere. They don't realize how cool it is. They just want to go out to the beach and see, it, which is good, but there are much better views. And I usually try to tell them that, but this one in particular from LC 36 is going to be great from the beach. 100%. Mm -hmm. This will be spectacular from the beach. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 Now, see, this shot. Like the Delta. You know, the Pad 17 used to be great from Je Jetty Park also. The Delta IIs that launched the early Mars rovers and many science missions. Mm -hmm. The GPS satellites we were talking about, most of them were were launched on the uh, the Delta IIs initially. And those were Pad 17A and B. Yeah. And they were readily visible from the Pad, but they were, they were taken down about two years ago, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. They phased out the Delta, didn't they? Placing it. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. And uh, Daryl asked uh, if it's taller than the water tower. I do think it is taller than the water tower. It is. I think yeah. the water tower is 400 feet. And the rocket this, is how tall? The water tower, I believe, will be bigger than the one at Wallops, which is the biggest one right now. No, he's talking about the rocket being taller than the water tower. Oh, no. I don't think the rocket is taller than the water tower. I don't think so. I don't know. We'll find out. We'll, we'll definitely find out. Um, uh, this picture you have here on the screen here, Steve-O, mm -hmm. if you're able to get a launch with this particular picture, dude, that's going to be a great shot, man. Because oh, you got yeah. the lighthouse in it, man. You got the water tower. Oh, dude, that would just be such a great shot. Yeah, this Dave, is... Uh, doing when the, when the um, when those when those boosters are coming back and we have the legs, right? The legs extended. Mm -hmm. I'd like to get a shot of the lighthouse coming right between the legs. Right between them. That'd nice. Be, that'd be tough. Yeah. You can do that right from right from the um, right from the pier. Yeah. Wow. I never I never thought of that. That is. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You have to go out f far enough, not all the way, but you have to go out most of the way on the pier, mm -hmm. and then and then you'll get this view, this view that you have here, and then if you're right there at that moment. You can catch catch the lighthouse between the legs. Have you done it? 
I have several times. Have it? Okay. <laughs> Last time I got it. Yeah. Yeah, nice. I put it so online. To answer know. Daryl's question, no, not taller than the water tower. The water tower is 400 feet and the rocket will be 313 feet. Okay. All right. So a little shorter, a little shorter. So you're probably talking like like this little rim like yeah, at the base of the dome. The rim there, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so going off that render was probably not the best way to do it, but um all right. Well, that's cool. I think um I think we have ourselves a show. Uh we do have a that that Starlink launch that we were talking about uh is now scheduled for uh July 8th. That's next Wednesday. Um let's see. I want to make sure that everyone sees how to follow Ken. Let me scroll up here. So this is this yeah. Ken's uh that's uh, it. Twitter that's page. It. Um, and then you also, yeah, space Space is close and Ken Kramer.com. Now these are all E's Seinfeld fans. These are all E's. (laughs) (laughs) Um, yeah. So space up close.com and Ken Kramer.com. Uh, just, just follow him. Follow him on Twitter and you'll see everything he's about all the time. Right. And if you ever run into him in port, Say hey, because you know. Hey, hello. Yeah, exactly. Ken, he's one of my. I, I used to I used to watch Ken on um on the the NASA press briefings. I always look forward to to Ken and Chris G and uh, uh, Marsha Dunn. Uh, you know, a lot of these people. You know, Ken was one of these people that I really looked up to. He always asked the just really great questions, and so it was it was kind of one of those. Uh, kind of one of those starstruck moments. The first time I ever ran into Ken out at the port, you know, I was like, I, I, I know that guy. I know him from the, <laughs> from, from the NASA press briefings. Oh my gosh. Um, no, that's very kind. But, very kind. Thank you. But Ken's a great guy. So if you ever see him out at the port, if you're ever lucky enough to come out, come to the space coast, or if you live here, uh, yeah. Say hi, bug him, ask him some questions. He likes talking. Buy a picture. Buy a picture. And, and buy a picture. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or a man in a mask. Where did where did the mask go from? Yeah, Gene? don't forget. Go yeah. to uh, get space pictures and space masks. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. We'll have to have you on thank again. You. Maybe um, I don't know something, some some reason, some some something chemistry related. Maybe like once perseverance is perseverance is on the ground and we can actually start yeah. talking. Although that seems yeah, kind of far off. Last time, see that. Oh, we get to do cool things. Yeah. See, I did this as a chemist. I had to get dressed too in a gown. Yeah. But that was to protect me from the chemicals. Now we are protecting the rover from the filthy humans again. <laughs> Very sure. Planetary protection we is. No more earth bugs on our rover. Right. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, let's wrap this up, y'all. Um, thanks everybody in chat. I saw uh, Daryl and Harry and and Jack and Becca was there for Greg. a second, and Greg was there. Uh, Michael Kane, appreciate you guys all tuning in. And um, Gene, say wave bye. You know, yeah, Gene was here. Yeah. Hey, if you if you liked it, like it, and uh, if you're not already subscribed, subscribe. <laughs> Smash that like button. Smash Destroy <laughs> the subscribe button. All right, thanks, y'all. Play us out, Kegel. Shutdown sequence initiated. Shutting down. All righty.